Now we are moving to the next slide. And on the next slide, you do have this composition of uh, Central Information Commission and State Information Commission. So if I talk about here, you do have the Central Information Commission and here you do have State Information Commission. So if I talk about the composition, it is these both. So first of all, the, these two bodies, both these bodies are going to be multi-member body. It is not a single member. So that is the keyword that this is a multi, these two bodies are multi-member bodies. And this is going to be a two-layered organ. Organization. At the top, you do have this Chief Information Commissioner. Similarly, here as well in State Information Commission as well, at the top, you do have this Chief Information Commissioner. And at the bottom, the into this RTI Amendment Act 2019, what has been written that such members of such numbers of commissioner as decided by the union government the maximum ceiling has been put that it is going to be 10 commissioners right so the maximum depending on the workload right so what amount so uh, it could be three it could be five it could be six so whether it will have central cic or even in relation to the sic so this confusion that you need to that in relation to it, there might be means logic my and many a times in uh, telegram or uh, you, uh, youtube community whenever i am framing any kind of question just i put in the logic see your logics cannot dictate the constitutional or any of the acts provision. It might be that something or some statement might seem logical that okay in relation to this uh, central agency if central government or the parliament does have power then in relation to the similar organization which is located into the state right uh, either state government or the state legislature will have power. No, your logic should not dictate these acts in acts things or the parts or whatever right it may be totally different so you need to have an control over that thing right so in relation so here the thing that i wanted to point out that in relation see uh, into the in relation to this central information commissioner commission right uh, the power has been given to the union government that what will be the number of commissioner that will be decided by union government but here that in, in relation to the state information commission as well this power that how many members a particular state information commission will have or how many uh, number of commissioner they will have right that will also that will not be decided by that particular state government or that particular state legislature but rather that decision or that power has also been given to the union government and the maximum size could be 10 right so here uh, it could be means depending on the workload of that particular state union government so suppose for karnataka it might specify that it will have six or seven or ten commissioner but for goa it might decide that hey you should be managing only with two commissioners so at the top this is a uh, mandatory uh, designation that at the top you will have this chief information commissioner at the both level at the central level at the state level at the bottom you have this information commissioner right same here but the here state by state how many commissioners into the state right state by state it may differ the power again i am pointing out that how many people the maximum ceiling has been given that the maximum number can be maximum number of commissioner could be 10 right and why i am repeating continuously see many a guys people many a people who have learned this or who have read this lakshmi khan twice or thrice they do suggest me not to keep uh, repeating these things but i do this deliberately see teaching is an art right and you will have when you are providing this uh, or when you are into this teaching thing right even even i am not a regular faculty but i have learned these things right so here you will have to think about every even average people right so by continuously repeating these things what i ensure what i try to ensure at the risk of making the video lengthy what i try to make sure is that even in the class itself you need not to go to the notes right even in the class itself you should uh, get this amount of expertise that it could you could retain the information for next one or one and a half months so that is my attempt and that's why i continuously keep repeating and emphasizing on those points where uh, there is possibility on of framing a question being framed right so again i am emphasizing that the union government and union government in relation to the state information commission as well again i am saying that you should not be driven by the logic every time right
right logic can kill you there may be six or seven at least question where questions are asked into the prelim which will be completely completely uh, dismantled from the logic completely eliminated or isolated from the logics right uh, I'll, I'll get you I'll, I'll, I'll have a video itself where whatever number of questions that I have asked into the YouTube community and whatever number into the telegram or insta right I'll frame a video of one hour where I'll be taking uh, those questions that where what are the trap points what are the areas where UPSC and state public service commission Although in the State Public Service Commission there are direct questions, there are factual, either you know it or don't know it. Although UPPSC and Bihar PSC right now they are competing with this UPSC and they are also designing their prelim questions, uh, more analytical, but still uh, by and large state uh, these uh, state public service commissions are still restricting themselves to the factual thing but if i talk about the upsc they are creating the trap point so i can have a separate video before this 2020 prelim where I will be discussing uh, at least in relation to the polity I can discuss that what are the in what all statement what can be there may be more than one trap point into one statement so that we can discuss. So about this composition uh, I hope you do have clarity right. If I talk about the appointment so appointment of this chief uh, information commissioner and the state information commissioner and the members at the uh, central information commission level is done by the president and at the state level it will be done by so here the image of Arif Muhammad Khan he happens to be governor of Kerala right so that is hidden right can I should I remove it no means you have to take it right that uh, the chief ele election commissioner and the information commissioner at the state level are appointed by the governor when we will notice see uh, when we were discussing when we will be dis uh, discussing this removal method right so in removal method you will notice and that is a difference between this NHRC and CIC and uh, SIC and SHRC. So there if you notice the appointment of the people were being done by this president and the governor at the state level and when I talk about the removal method so there the removal was being done by be it NHRC or be it SHRC the removal was being done by the president itself right removal of both SHRC and NHRC but here when we will be discussing the removal method of uh, CIC and SIC commissioners and uh, chief information commissioner you will notice that the removal will be done at the central level by the president and removal at the state level so that differentiation again uh, there are uh, uh, six or seven constitutional bodies and there are on, on what uh, in these constitutional bodies a, uh, besides these function what will be asked so question can be asked on terms service condition on uh, what you call this uh, expenditure whether expenditure is charged or not so on these things right uh, where they do submit the report whether they do submit their annual report right to the central government or to the uh, parliament or to the president so on all these choke points these are the choke points in these constitutional and extra constitutional bodies that and remembering uh, all these whether the term is being who get to remove it who is appointing authority uh, what is the tenure what is the term wh where th wh whether the expenses are charged or not who gets to decide the service so there are seven or eight parameters and remembering the these uh, what you call seven or eight parameters of these 10 organization I know can be bulky so at the end of uh, once we have wrapped up this uh, constitutional bodies we already have wrapped up once we have wrapped up this extra constitutional bodies I'll be giving you excel uh, sheet where all these information in relation to these extra constitutional bodies and uh, constitutional bodies will be covered in one single slide one one excel sheet right so you can just copy paste it on your table and your work will go right so this was about the composition and the appointing authority right now we are moving to the so here again one information the as far as salary and the service condition of both so again this is a noticeable point here the as far as appointment was concerned appointment of the state information commissioner and appointment of uh, 
इंफॉर्मेशन कमिश्नर चीफ इंफॉर्मेशन कमिश्नर एंड इंफॉर्मेशन कमिश्नर वॉज बींग डन बाई द गवर्नर विच इज अड ऑफ विच इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल हेड ऑफ स्टेट बट एज फार एज सैलरी एंड द सर्विस कंडीशन इज कंसर्न सैलरी एंड सर्विस कंडीशन लॉजिकली इफ यू गो लॉजिकली बिकॉज ही इज बींग अपॉइंटेड बाय दिस गवर्नर सो लॉजिकली इट शुड हैव बीन डिसाइडेड by the state government because uh, for him the salary and service condition will be decided for this uh, central information commissioner right salary and service condition is being decided by central government so logically if you go from the appointment logic because the state information commissioner and chief information commissioner is being appointed by the governor so logically the salary and the service condition should be decided by the state government and not by the central government but here again the logic is failing and it is the provision in the act that is winning right so here the salary and service condition of cics uh, central information commissioners and information commissioner and state information commissioner and chief information commissioner will be determined by the central government right this information in green that is going to however once and what has been means from here it might you might argue that independence so yes to some degree independence is being compromised but another provision if you see however once determined that x amount of salary or x is going to be the service condition right thereafter once that person has been appointed appointed for a particular tenure so tenure as well into the later part of this discussion you will notice that besides this salary and service condition tenure as well of both these bodies will be decided or both the members of these bodies will be decided by the central government so once the tenure once the service condition once the salary has been decided for a uh, chief information commissioner or information commissioner that cannot be reduced during his tenure right so that is one thing that to some degree ensure that these organization remain to some degree again not to the degree that cag is autonomous not to the degree that election commission is autonomous not to the degree that upsc is autonomous but to certain degree and that's why these bodies has still despite so many control measures right despite so many choke point these bodies has still been considered as independent bodies so i hope that point you will have clarity on now if i talk about the eligibility criteria so for a person so eligibility criteria as well is going to be common for appointment Uh, of uh, information commissioner at the state level and central information commission again i am repeating the eligibility criteria for a person to be appointed as member into the state information commissioner uh, commission or central information commission is going to be same so a person should have wide knowledge in law i hope it is visible right so wide uh, knowledge in law journalism administration governance science and technology right so in all these field if any person or if any of these field not all these field if any person does have wide knowledge into any of these field he or she can be appointed as either information commissioner or chief information commissioner right at the both at the state level and both at the uh, this central information commissioner now into this eligibility criteria itself there are few things or few designation if any person is holding that designation it has been denied that those person cannot be appointed or cannot be selected as uh, what you call chief information commissioner or information so what are those designation so if any person is member of parliament or if any person is member of legislative assembly right or if any person has been holding any of the office of profit under either government or any political party or if you are already employed in any kind of uh, business any kind of firm uh, or if you are owning any kind of business so these kind of people so anything under this circle right can be appointed but if anything outside this circle right if you are member of legislative so these people right if you are member of parliament member of legislative assembly if you are holding office of profit or if, if you are already into any job or if you are having any kind of business so these people because ultimately if you are a mla if you are mp if you are holding office of profit what is the primary objective so primary objective of these organizations cic and uh, sic is to ensure right to information but if 
uh, you are already member of parliament member of like so that is going to create this conflict of interest at the end of day uh, the offices that these people will be holding those uh, offices are going to be public offices you might uh, being a member right uh, when uh, the complaint will arrive that particular mp office or that particular office where mp is holding post if they are not providing information and if that complaint is being received by uh, organization in which you are a member member of parliament or member of legislature then you might may say that 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 is the situation that is called conflict of interest so that is going to be the eligibility criteria i hope the eligibility criteria as well so once a person so the, whatever that we discussed into the previous slide regarding this eligibility criteria all these things has been mentioned just a moment all these things has been mentioned on this slide into the textual format candidate for central information commissioner commission or state here sc is missing right so a state information commissioner must be person of eminence all these things that we discussed who are the people who shall not be appointed as uh, in these kind of offices so these are nothing but these are things that has been mentioned into the textual format now we are going to discuss the next thing and that is appointment and the term so appointment you already know under into the previous to previous slide we already have discussed that as far as central information commission uh, commissioner chief commissioner and the member is concerned they are appointed by the president as far as state information commissioner uh, their chief commissioner or members are concerned they will be appointed by the governor right now the next thing that is term term of both central information commission and state information commission by 2019 it has been amended by rti amendment act 2019 and it will be decided now by the central government so the upper age ceiling is 65 years right here oh oh what is this 70 years so perhaps this 70 years is a mistake right i need to correct it it is uh, 65 years perhaps this slide has been copied directly from the nhrc so the nhrc's upper uh, uh, ceiling upper uh, this uh, age ceiling was 70 years so from there it has been copied so it needs a correction so as of now you have to consider it 65 years when as and when you will get this pda for ppt there you will find it corrected right so as far as tenure is concerned that is going to be three years and that has been decided by the central government right central government does have power the two year down the line it can say that no now onwards this tenure of the cic and uh, sic is not going to be three years but it is going to be four years as i already have told you into the introductory part itself that since this rti act has been amended and the central government has been given this delegated power that they will be deciding now onwards so for any changes now onwards in terms salaries service condition they no, need not to the go to the parliament just because they have been given now the power so any par any amendment into the rti act is not necessary as far as changing the term if there are other things that needs to be changed besides which are mentioned into the rti act 2019 then they need to go to the parliament but as far as this term tenure salary and other things are concerned right they need not to go to the parliament now move to the next slide and let us start discussing the removal method now here you one word that you can notice into the heading that is common that is stricken through so why this common has been so we'll compare the removal method of uh, central information commission and state information commission from the removal method of nhrc and shrc a comparative study let us do right so if you notice the in nhrc and shrc both in both the cases uh, the chairperson or the members were being removed by the president so it was the president who was taking this final decision in nhrc and uh, state human Re uh, rights commission in both the cases but here the removal authority the final removal decision will be taken in relation to the cic by the president and in relation to the uh, state information commissioner or commissioners by the governor so here the appointment and uh, removal right so appointment of the cic was being done by the president a removal as well by the president and uh, appointment of state information commission is being done by the governor 
and removal as well by the governor but in case of nhrc and shrc appointment of nhrc and removal both by the president and as far as removal of this shrc was concerned right that was also being done by the president while he was being appointed shrc members and uh, this uh, chairperson was being appointed while by the president so that clarity that difference you will have uh, again i am repeating what is the difference so as far as grounds are concerned grounds are going to be same in relation to the nhrc and whatever grounds on which nhrc and shrc people were being removed on the same ground uh, chief information commissioner and information commissioner will be removed there is no difference the only difference is the removal final removal call will be taken in case of cic by the president and in case of sic by the governor right so the removal method here in relation to the cic and sic state information commission is not going to be same right it, it is not going to be the common rest of things i am not discussing because these things the grounds has already been discussed in to the NHRC and I expect you to watch these videos in continuation so that we could avoid these duplicates so that we could give pass by to certain amount of information because already the other respect whichever respect is possible we are discussing in very detail right so we can take the leeway that few things we, we can give a pass by as far as re reappointment was concerned so again a comparative study what was the case in nhrc and shrc so he, there they were eligible for the reappointment but here you will notice that these people uh, cic and sic central information commissioner and state information commissioner are not eligible not the word is not not eligible for the reappointment but in certain cases you will notice that they are eligible although generally in a statement if they are a uh, question is raised that whether they are eligible for the appointment the cic and sic members are eligible for the reappointment or not so your answer would be no they they won't be eligible for the appointment but there is one peculiar case where they are eligible for the appointment so if any member if any suppose uh, chief commissioner chief information commissioner or state information commissioner right is retiring at the bottom you do have information commissioner right now it might be the case that government might think that any information commissioner who has gained the experience he should be promoted to the state information commission right so the reappointment that we are talking about the reappointment is not possible under the government of state under any other service right so you understand the difference they cannot be employed by the government of state or government of india into any another service but as far as promotion as a state information commissioner or central and one thing again you will have to do you remember when we were discussing this upsc so here there as well you had similar situation that outside their organization they were not being employed they could not be employed but as far as within the organizational hierarchy it was concerned so i had said that it was the state public service commission if it is a if there is any member of state public service commission there are three avenues that is open for him he can be appointed as a chairman to the same state public service commission he or she could be appointed a chairperson of the other uh, state public service commission he can could go to the he could be promoted as a upsc member as well right so there was the, these two three avenues that were available so within the organization the promotion was possible so here the state public service commission member could be promoted into the upsc but that kind of differentiate or that kind of power is not available into the cic or sic if you are a state level information commissioner right the only thing that you could be promoted is as a chief commissioner of the state within the state itself you if you are a member of central information commissioner a uh, commission right then you can be promoted as a chief information commissioner of central information so this cross from the state to the union or from the union to the state that was available into the upsc and spsc that is not possible here that crossing is not possible so that differentiation although means a com, uh, information commissioner can be promoted as uh, what you call as as chief information commissioner so a state information commissioner as a state chief information commissioner and a union sorry central information commissioner 
as a central chief information commissioner right but one thing again there is a caveat here and the caveat is that if a uh, information commissioner is being promoted as chief information commissioner the total term the total term cannot exceed more than 5 years so suppose a information commissioner who has already served as a information commissioner for 2 years or say three years, uh, three years is the maximum tenure of any information commissioner. He has already served suppose 2.5 years, right? Now he is being promoted. So he cannot retain this chief information commissioner post for more than another 2.5 year because the maximum ceiling as uh, information commissioner and plus chief information commissioner, the maximum ceiling has been given as five years. So that information you need to take care that while promotion that so that's why this point here that unlike state public service commission who could be promoted until C or he reaches to the UPSC office, no bar on the member number of years of the service. So that has not been mentioned into the UPSC that is not applicable means he will be appointed up for the five years, six years. So that ceiling that upper ceiling has not been mentioned but the upper ceiling in case of this in uh, CIC and SIC has been given as five years, right? So that clarity on the reappointment and the term you will have on right again i am issuing a general statement that if generally a statement has been mentioned whether the cic and sic members or chief information commissioners right whether they are eligible for the reappointment or not so you will have to mark not you need not to go into the details right you know need not to get into the nitty gritty now let us move to the next slide and let us start discussing after this reappointment let us start discussing this working mechanism of central information commission and state information commission as part of this working mechanism of central information commission and state information commission will also be discussing the parts of central information commission and state information commission so central cic and sic has been given power as a civil court although as i already told you that they are they should not be mistaken or misconstrued as uh, civil court right they are quasi judicial they are not judicial body they are quasi judicial body now to understand the parts of cic and sic you will have to understand whole of the flow that if a person has to apply for this rti if he want to seek any information from any kind of organ uh, any organization any state any government agency or any of the public authority that's that does come under the ambit of this rti what is the process that he she he or she has to opt for right so as i already have passed you the information that in cities you will often find that the hierarchy starts from in any organization this hierarchy starts from pio public information officer these two official that is apio assistant public information of official and pio public information official is appointed has been mandated by the rti that any organization be it agriculture ministry be it ministry of home affairs be it income any organization any office that has been established by the government or any public authority that has that is being or any organization that is being substantially funded either by the state government or central government you will notice that they have been mandated that in their office they'll have to appoint these two people that is apio and and PIO. This APIO can be means they can ignore this appointment of the APIO because APIO role is limited only to the collection of this RTI, right? So if they can give this additional responsibility to the PIO itself that you only collect the primary job of this, see, the primary job of this PIO is to provide this information, the information that has been sought by the applicant, the job, it is the job of PIO to provide that information. Into the villages, you will find this APIO as well, where they will be collecting Collecting, they will be guiding people that how to file the information. Once the job of this uh, APIO is not to provide you this information and this the, the, the thing that I am talking this is a, just a repetition just to ensure that things get revised into your mind, right? So APIO, let us consider that APIO received the this application from the applicant. Thereafter, after collecting, he'll be forwarding it to the PIO and it is the PIO who has been mandated by the RTI Act 
that he or she will be providing that information. Now it might be and these, this thing again has not been put up into the written format that so you need to be very vigilant what I am speaking. So keep your ears active. So once this person PIO has received the information, it becomes mandated that he provide that information within the 30 days of the receipt. Now another case situation might be that because people are ignorant, people do not have access to all the information. So suppose the information that they were seeking were meant to be provided by the Ministry of Home Affairs, but they addressed that particular letter not to the Ministry of Home Affairs, but to the Ministry of Agriculture. Now in that case, it is the duty of the nodal officer or the PIO uh, officer of this Ministry of Home Affairs to transfer this uh, information or to uh, transfer this request of that applicant to the Ministry of Agriculture. Okay. Now let us consider the second scenario that it was addressed, this application was addressed to the right PIO, public information officer. Of, uh, officer. So it has been mandated that he or she will be providing that information within the 30 days. If he, suppose he provided the information, first of all let us take that he has provided. There may be different scenarios, the scenarios may be that he has provided the information, the another scenario has uh, may be that he has not provided the information, the another scenario may be that he has provided the information information but information was not satisfactory whatever if the, there were four questions three question has been replied another question has not been replied or information if has been replied all the question has been replied it may be so vaguely worded there may not be all the facts that may be present it's just just to means in a diplomatic language that may have been replied just to ensure that person could not claim so in that case as well so what are the options so there may be different scenarios and those scenarios we will be discussing right so let us consider the second third or fourth case so suppose information was provided right within the 30 days whatever information through the application that you had sought through this RTI that information has been provided but you are not satisfied with that kind of information now the remedy in that case lies with two things the two uh, ways that you do have you can directly you can jump this stage you can directly once 30 days passes once one thing that you need to make into your mind clear that the 30 days period so once 30 days has been passed and either you if you have not been provided the information or if you have been provided the misleading information so after 30 days you become eligible to directly approach this SIC or CIC whether you will be approaching this SIC or CIC that will be depending on the jurisdiction right so if you had sought information again this is a repetition that if you have sought information from a state government department right so in that case to the complaint regarding that particular state government department you will be approaching state information commission not the central information commission and if you had sought that information from public information official of a central agency right income tax office or any other central agency in that case you will be approaching the CIC but the second option the second remedy that you have and that remedy will not lie with the CIC or SIC that remedy would be lying into the same organization so if you have sought information from uh, income tax office that is a central agency right so if you had sought and PIO had provided you the misleading information the second remedy that you do have is that within the same organization within the income tax office itself on their portal or in their office there would be some appellate authority right and through that appellate on to that appellate authority you can raise this that hey I had sought this so and so information now can you look into because that information is not appropriate that information is not factual that information is not satisfactory so can you so it is the through the first appeal there are two appeals that does lie with uh, any applicant so there are in the first appeal you need not to file uh, pay any additional fee here you needed to pay a nominal fee of 10 rupees after into the first appeal you need not to pay any additional fee so first and second appeal through the first time and second time you file appeal and thereafter uh, if things are not sorted out or if uh, appropriate information is not provided even by the appellate authority you can then go to although again I am pointing out that you could have missed this step if 30 days has already been passed right and you could have approached this CIC or SIC depending on the case directly but generally this method because most 
cost of the organization, good organization, good government organization that I am talking about, will have option of this appellate authority as well, right? So that was about the working mechanism. Now, what are the things? So if you have gone to this, uh, now it comes into the parts of State Information Commission and Central Information Commission that comes into the picture. Now, this they need to be provided with the adequate power because in absence of adequate power, they cannot ensure the compliance from the state agency or central agency, right? If you do, do not provide, if you do not equip these agencies, these organizations, right, with the adequate amount of power, how they are going to? So, to ensure that they do have adequate amount of power, they have been given certain powers, right? So, what in all uh, all these scenarios has been uh, what you call discussed that in what all scenarios you can go to this CIC or SIC. So, if office has not appointed any, so it might be the case that a particular office this has already been discussed into the introductory section of this video that may be case that a particular office may not have appointed this PIO person public information official itself right into the first place. So, who do you seek information from if the, the PIO itself is not present? So, in that case you can go to the SIC or CIC. Right? The second option that information was not received within the 30 days, again you can approach. Right? Uh, information is not completely accurate, complete or it is misleading, it may be inappropriate. Information received is not sufficient. So, in all these four scenarios, you can approach. So, this was about uh, the scenarios and that we already have discussed. Now, you are talking about the power. So, the power that has been provided to the CIC and SIC is almost uh, of a civil court. Again, I am pointing out that when I am saying power that they have been provided is of a, almost of a civil court, it should not be min misconstrued that these bodies are going to be quasi-judicial, uh, sorry, judicial bodies. These bodies are just quasi-judicial bodies. Now, what are the things that they can do? So, as part of their investigation, see, it's not that whatever claim that you have been, you as a applicant has made, right, because you are going to present a single-sided story, right. They may have their another, these agency may have another uh, level of story, right? They, they, they may also have some genuine reason. So, that genuine reason will be heard. Now, here, uh, what are the parts that they may have? So, as part of their investigation as a civil court, they first of all, they will be calling that public information official. Right, a public information official was available. Right, so they may ask that, well, hey, mandated day was the 30 days. Why did not you provide this information in time? Why did you delay? Right, or they may call that agency's head. Right, and they may call, uh, they may seek the information while investigating or while performing its role as a civil court. It might might take any kind of statement on oath on affidavit. Right. Uh, so that it, it could have a legal value and that could be used if this agency does not work in a good manner that can be used against that particular agency in future times, right? Search for any kind of document if this PIO says that no, no, this kind of information does not exist. So, in, in, that, uh, in that situation, it can search that particular office for that particular uh, information or for that particular document. It might into the course of their investigation, it might ask that public information officer to produce. It, it can requisition uh, that particular document or any kind of information, right? So, can requisition any document from that agency or court and can call anyone, any official as part of its investigation as a witness. So, this kind of power that they have been as part of civil court or as part as or as uh, part of uh, what you call quasi judicial body, these are the power. This is how they are going to conduct inquiry. So, this is not the actual power. This is just one aspect of the power that has been extended to both SIC and CIC. The actual power, what are the things that is going to ensure that their decision. So, after that, after this was the investigation, once the investigation has been completed, now uh, this SIC or CIC has to decide that to what degree what will be the quantum of punishment, right? Whether what amount of fine. So, there is in RTI, there has been, there is this provision of this imposing penalty on this public information official as well. The upper limit of the penalty that can be imposed by Central Information Commission and State Information Commission is 25,000 and uh, per day delay, it can impose fine starting from 20, uh, 250 rupees per day. On per day delay, 
the input although this figure can increase but the minimum figure is 250 rupees per day and the maximum ceiling is 25000 so that is the penalty part that has been so after their investigation if this uh, cic or sic depending on the case that which agency was investigating if they found that a public information official or that particular agency is continuously uh, or even not um, uh, maybe that they may not they may it may be that it is their first case itself so even in that case they may impose the penalty so these are the power that has been given to these agency another thing that they can do uh, besides this uh, imposition of penalty they can direct public body that particular uh, public body or agency to compensate application for so, so that 250 rupees right and 25k that i we were talking about or direct that public body or agency to appoint if uh, the PIO, so they might say that hey, we did not after the transfer of a particular person, we could not provide you to the workload, we could not provide the information. Uh, sorry, we could not appoint this public information official. So in that case, it can direct that body or agency that you do appoint that, right? If 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 an organization has not, and this is first time, perhaps they may not have that expertise as well. That a particular office, central agency, or government, uh, what you call state agency, had just been uh, what you call uh, established, right? In in a particular remote area. So uh, the person who has been transferred there, he may not have that adequate level of training. So the training arrangement also can be done so that training option has not been written here so the training arrangement also can be made by this cic and sic so that thing you will have to add impose penalty direct the public body compensation besides that see uh, they are going to present the annual report so this cic will present the annual report to the central government again this is a keyword that cic will be submitting their report annual report to the central government and not to the parliament or president not to these bodies rather to the central government to the executive similarly state information commission is going to submit his annual report to state government and not to the state legislature or the governor so that can be a key information for solving any of the prelim oriented question and thereafter means in that annual report if there is any uh, organization or any agency that is continuously violating these rules of RTIs uh, 2005 in that case what it can do is that in annual report it can mention that uh, agency's name it can mention the repeated violation by that agency and how to ensure the conformity how to ensure that these organization does not violate uh, their direction right so annual report is nothing annual report again uh, is a accountability for accountability measure. So, I hope the mechanism that ensure the compliance, right, it is these power actually, these power of imposing penalty, this power of pointing their error, any agency's error uh, to the central government and the state government depending on the case, right. So, it is these kind of power that does ensure that the agencies does appoint PIO, does provide information into the right time does provide the right information appropriate information so this was about the mechanism the common parts we already have talked about that, that it is the duty of commission to receive and inquire into the complaint for from any person right so this already have been the commission can order inquiry so this is one important point that needs to be pointed so besides uh, receiving besides acting on complaint of uh, any on receipt of complaint of any person right besides that they do have power that even without receiving complaint they can act if any agency has been appointed has been pointed out by any media organization that that, that particular agency is uh, has not appointed any public information official from last uh, two years say right so selectivists are filing the rti rti is application in that organization is continuously piling up and still this organization is not cognizant to uh, the provisions of this RTI because RTI provisions mandate that every government organization or every organization, every public authority that has that is being financed uh, substantially by central government and state government, they need to appoint this APIO and PIO. But if they are violating and if that has been pointed, it might be that any 
complaint may not have been received by any of RTI activist or RTI applicant directly to them, but they can on the basis of that media report, they can initiate the action against that particular investigation against that particular agency suo moto. While inquiring the commission has the power to act, so all these points has already been discussed, right? This annual report has already been discussed. The key point in annual report, you have to remember that central information commission First of all, these two commission, both these commission submit their report, annual report to the government, not to the governor or president or the parliament or the state legislature, right? And central information commission submits its report to the central government and state information commission su submits its report to the state government. So that clarity, the common power, this is a miscellaneous, after the common power, this is a miscellaneous information and after this, we will be wrapping up this slide, right? Uh, one thing, this point has already been discussed that if uh, RTI applicant has addressed, means uh, ignorantly he did not have information that whether I should be, means he had information that this is the information that I need or this is the question that I need to ask from this government body, but he was not sure whether that question should be addressed to Ministry of Agriculture or Ministry of Home Affairs or Ministry of Defence. So, in that case, he might mistake, he do might mistake that he may address his letter uh, to a particular ministry to which uh, he or uh, that particular ministry did not have information. In that case, it is the nodal officer or the PIO official of the recipient organization. It is his or her duty that on receipt of uh, this application, he need not to reject but rather transfer, rather orient it to the right department, right organization. So, it is the duty. So, that information and it can also act as a suo moto on the suo moto. So, that these two information has already been discussed, right. So, with this, we are wrapping up this lecture with these three questions that I expect you to attempt and let me know into the comment section. So, this is the first information, uh, first question rather, right. This is the second question and this is the third question. So, these are the three questions that has been designed for you to attempt for the CIC and SIC. So, with this, we are wrapping up with this lecture. Till then, we come up with the next lecture. Till then, bye-bye.